thing? No. It's not. It could bring down everything. Well, what do you think? Oh, I completely agree. The rivalry can definitely bring about some great things, but it can definitely destroy things as well. Oh, yeah. It can bring some, you know, I'm, I'm constantly being challenged now. You know, there's all these other horror hosts trying to bump me off before my time. Uh, you know, trying to steal steal the whole format of the show. Yeah, I'm sure they're or, just waiting in line. <laughs> they are waiting in line, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, everybody, you know, they're feeding at the bottom. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, glad we got you to giggle there. Uh, good to see you happy, you know. Uh, one, one, once in a while you hit a soft spot. So. No, okay, I don't mean to. I don't mean to, but I just saw... Uh, I have a, a very outspoken, you know. Well, um, a lot of a lot of people have gotten grilled on this show uh, in you, Kenosha. You're outspoken? No. no okay. No. Right. no. No. That's right. You 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 and me are very alike in that sense. Nah, very good. But it gets us into trouble. Well, once in a while, but sometimes, uh, you know, trouble's a good thing. So. Yeah, it can be fun. I think. Give <laughs> me a lot of fun. I think we're going to cause them to stir up the pot a little bit, you know. It gets boring, you know. If uh, an unprecedented director such as yourself hadn't come along and woke up a bunch of people being lazy, uh, maybe they wouldn't have had such a big problem. But it really, uh, perhaps you made them focus on their own inadequacies. Well, like I said last time, there are a lot of uh, movies and directors who slide past the radar if you will and get their films turned into these big projects and they're horrible they're despicable they should never have been made and these directors are just they don't know what they're doing and you know what <laughs> directing is the easiest job in the world directing is not difficult at all you're just you know you're just a big monkey just telling people you know go here go there go what you're just kind of keeping things together I mean, acting is tough, you know, running the camera, those are the to the true jobs, but you need a director to kind of just pull things together when they get out of hand, so. Oh, I, I believe that, I believe that. Now, some directors yeah, direct in different fashion. Some of them just expect the actors to show up and act. Others are very picky about every little move that they make. Uh, where were you in that category? Oh, no, I, I, uh, I was definitely one for, I was the actor's director, I let them make their own decisions. Um, if I didn't like it, I'm the director, I would tell them I didn't like it. I, you know, I'll try this way instead, do it this way. Let's see how this works, um, you know, doing something different. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mostly uh, let the actors figure it out for themselves. Oh, I gotcha. So now, what, what more can you tell us about uh, Joseph Cotton? Because we, we certainly talked about him for a while. Well, I don't know if he would want me telling a lot about him because I don't know if you ever have him on your show or not but uh, no um, he hasn't we've, we've sent out invitations okay yeah has it responded yet uh, no okay yeah but this is the only kind of show where we can actually get uh, deceased uh, celebrities on the show because uh, it makes all the sense in the world doesn't it hey it, your show's one in a million for that huh <laughs> you bet it is yeah Joseph Cotton was uh, a great friend of mine and he uh, he was outstanding, an outstanding actor, and as you know, he's been in a bunch of movies, a whole lot of movies. Um, do you have a favorite Joseph Cotton film at all, or are you familiar with him? I'm familiar with him. I don't have a favorite. Yeah, it's hard he, to he's choose. been in so many, so yeah, it's hard to choose. Definitely. Yes, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing really to share except that he was a great man, a great friend, um, there for me every step of the way throughout my movies and everything, and. Uh, you know what, what? What more can I say? I mean, I, that's know. awesome. I, you know, I, I love, I love him. I even like him in Doctor Fives. That's a, mm. a great movie. They're making another Doctor Fives movie. Really? Yes. Uh, I guess uh, uh, the gentleman from Clockwork Orange, uh, Malcolm McDowell, is oh. going to play mm. Anton Fives. That's the teaser they're putting on Facebook right now. So oh. uh, I know people were touchy about it. Uh, for, originally, they were saying that Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, was going to make the film. And if they would have said that 10 years ago, everybody would have went, yeah, but this time they did not. <laughs> well, you know, since I've, uh, since I've come back from the dead here, then I uh, have caught up on some of the films that are out there. And I've got to say, I know this guy, Tim Byrne and Johnny Depp, and I like their, their partnership and what they do in some of the movies. Well, I agree with you 100%. Do, so. 
I, I think just, it's good to, to have that kind of partnership. That's that's very good. I hope they do many more films together yes. too as well. But then they, they went on to that and then they had another actor that they were talking about, but now it's Malcolm McDowell. Oh, William Defoe was mentioned. I don't know. That could have worked. He's pretty creepy in his own he, right. Oh, <laughs> def definitely creepy. Shadow of the Vampire? Yeah, yeah. That, that was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. Did you see him in, uh, wasn't he in Spider-Man? Yeah, I yes. didn't. I, yes, he not was. Spider-Man. <laughs> and not, I haven't seen too many of the superhero movies, but, uh, okay. yeah, but he could All prove right. himself to be really creepy, but I think his Nosferatu was outstanding. Yeah. And I remember t he was on a talk show talking about being in the getup with the hands and everything, and they asked him, well, did you need help with uh, going to the bathroom? And he said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to be the one there uh, to help him. No. <laughs> he could be the guy doing grips that day. <laughs> 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 or Gail, whatever they had to the question. Uh, but I imagine they, uh, you know. <laughs> wow, I, I've, uh, got, I've got nothing to say to that. So. Wipe out? <laughs> oh. oh, boy. Anyway, uh, on that note, I think we'll get back in tonight's horrifying melodrama, Japanese camera film, Gamera versus Zyger on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater. Hey, we got to do it. All right. I told you about that Gamera. What a character, huh? Oh, sounds like it. I mean, you come up with a flying turtle that people sometimes mistake as a UFO. Hero to the children. Uh, you know, he sure knocks down. He causes a lot of trouble on the side, but it, it's not really his fault. You know, it's usually because he's chasing some other monster or they knock him out. Or, and this is, this is a really one of the stranger movies from the beginning with this weird uh, alien spaceship and whatnot. Uh, what we are missing though is the original American dialogue uh, which had a certain, uh, they had creepy vocals. It was yeah. very overdubs. The overdubs are very creepy but it's still one of the creepier uh, to me of the Gamera films and then it goes through its uh, flashback sequence of course of former battles of Gamera, Gaios and Baragon who froze him solid but thankfully Gamera's pilot light didn't go out and he managed to thaw out and come back and save the day well thankfully for that yeah thankfully yeah and and this is one of those one of those great camera films where they actually have the one of the gamma songs oh. now the original time first time i ever saw gamma was on creature features when they bumped it up to seven o'clock on saturday nights okay and i just i caught it midway gamma was already destroying the nuclear facility and that was the original one was in black and white and he didn't fight another monster they're just they're grooming a new godzilla here but it was a rival movie company so you never see those two in the same movie together yet anyway and uh i was like what's this and i was just amazed by it but i had always remembered and i'm watching this when i was a kid and i remember that they were doing a gamma song this band was and he rips the roof off the building and blow, breathes fire on the band <laughs> any any band's worst nightmare for sure but uh, anyway so i remember them singing a gamma song and for years after that watching the movie I never saw, never saw that in the film. The band's playing something else. Well, I found one super old cruddy DVD copy, one of those collections, yeah. and we used that one, and I just happened to be watching it, and lo and behold, it wasn't just imagination, there was a Gamera song in the first Gamera movie, which is, wow. but the Gamera song in this movie is, I don't know what to say about it. It's a little more playful, I suppose. So, you know, I think it could be a bit Lovecraft inspired. See that, Giant definitely. sea monsters, but now Cthulhu would have been much bigger than any of these Japanese monsters. Oh, definitely. I, I'd like to see a Cthulhu versus Godzilla. Oh, I don't know that they belong in the same dimension. No, but because be Cthulhu is supposed to be an intelligent being, somewhat. Uh, Just develop, and consume Godzilla whole. Well, actually, some of the uh, later Gamera films, uh, the best ones, that, uh, probably some of the best giant. Japanese monster movies ever made are the ones that were made of Gamera from 95 to 99. Mm -hmm. uh, Gamera versus Iris. Iris is definitely like something that would come out of Cthu uh, Cth Lovecraft's imagination. Maybe that was a Freudian slip right there. Maybe we're on to something there with Mr. Lovecraft. Maybe. Um, could be taken a lot more seriously. Never really looked too happy in pictures though, but they say that no. you know, pictures took a long time to take. Nah, those should have been he should have been copacetic with that. Yeah, I think that's Lovecraft. Yeah, he just, he looks, uh, he's a strange individual. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. How about the, uh, if you're, there's another adaptation of uh, Dumb Witch Horror. 
with Dean Stockwell. Did you catch that one yet? No, I'm uh, not. Uh, well, I, I, you know, that's another one that the Roger Corman American International Pictures had made, and uh, they didn't really have the budgets to go do a Lovecraft story, but there's little things in there that make it interesting nonetheless. I particularly like uh, um, Les Baxter. I hope I got that right. His uh, score for uh, the Lovecraft uh, um, Dunwich Horror is amazing. Really, he taps into the weirdness of Lovecraft. So, but uh, we we've got Gamma for you, folks. I I don't know. It was all we could get at Kmart for five ninety nine today. Uh, <laughs> uh, we scour we scour the earth for the best movies. So, get right back into it now. That's right, Gamma versus Virus on Doctor Destruction's Crimson Theater. Gamera's gonna survive this one. I think this might uh, this might be it. That's a nasty monster, penetrating poor Gamera and laying an egg in his lung. That's just raw. And it'd be all right with me if he didn't survive. So. Oh, Orson, really? Have some faith in him. Come on. <sighs> I uh, I don't really believe in much faith, so I'm not a faithful kind of person. Okay. No. So Gamera doesn't have a part in a future film, but, you know, you could... No, not, not, uh, not if I have a say in it, no. <laughs> well, I imagine you, you had say most of the time. Is there some projects that uh, you didn't have say? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I don't know how much you know the history of Citizen Kane, you know, but that was, that was a big uh, disaster at one point and a number of points. And uh, they tried taking that away from me because I didn't have all the control that I needed or wanted. So that's uh, that's one very good scenario there. So. Did you have to ever meet William Randolph Hearst? Oh yeah, I um, yes, I, I met him on several occasions. I met him at some uh, dinner parties, and um, we uh, we exchanged a few words with each other. Okay, would those they be weren't... words that we could uh, perhaps uh, say on uh, Crimson Theater PG thirteen? Um. Not really, no. Were they violent outbreaks? I, now you've intriguing me now with this story. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you you know uh, you know my history, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say that. Um, well, everyone you know assumes that my movie Citizen Kane is based off of his life, and I'm not. You know, last time I was on the show, I denied everything because they say it was about my life too, and I'm not gonna say yay or nay either. There's nothing there to verify that. Okay. But when I saw Hearst and I uh, and I visited him and uh, we exchanged some words and it wasn't very pleasant. Let's just say that. Yeah. Did you at any point actually admire anything about Randolph Hearst, or was he someone that you were uh, vehemently opposed to? Uh, um, he made his living by, you know, telling stories. And creating these stories and papers and everything that, and um, by controlling the media and everything, and uh, predates um, Fox News. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a little bit, yes, <laughs> yes. And so uh, there wasn't a whole lot that I understood or appreciated with him that much. Um, it was interesting how he how he rose to you know fame, if you will, or how he got that big. But other than that, he was um, not a not a good man to say the least. No, I, I, I did not like him at all. No. Well, you think uh, you think rich people are just get that way about him? I mean, uh, the one percent, the uh, SR Mills of uh, <laughs> their time. <laughs> yes, and uh, one thing I did find out that most people do not realize was that I found out through uh, some secret files when making Citizen Kane um, that uh, what the name of Rosebud actually meant. Ah, I think I've heard that story too. Yes, you heard that I, story? But I don't I don't think it's uh, safe to say on the show though. I don't know how else to uh, say it. Oh, uh, well, um... Unless you want to, you know... Cue up the Echo and Bunny Man song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'm glad everybody got that one. Huh? Okay. Uh, some of my ghoulies might not have, but uh, that's, how's that? Was that a good... Uh, yeah, 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 pretty much. That was that was a good. Um, well, I, I don't, I don't even know what to say to that. I mean, there's, so I, there's no other way of explaining. All right, it really, now, did, so did you think that wasn't going to tick off Old Hurst, or did you purposely do that? Well, um, 
I, you know, it's not about her. So nice try, but uh, oh, okay, um, I see what we're, we're but uh, I'm here. saying, but hypothetically, mm -hmm. if it was to be about hers, um, I would have loved to have gotten under his collar. Yes, yes, that was a long way to admit to something. I long winded. I, uh, uh, we wouldn't expect Orson Welles to be long winded. winded. I, I'm not going to be taking anything, you know, someone named Dr. Destruction. So just. Oh, uh, yeah, well, uh, that's right. I, I've taken all the abuse, trust me. Yeah. Uh huh. Everything gets thrown my way. When it comes down on Dr. Destruction, it's bad news. Hey, it's your show. Uh huh. Well, well it is my fault. Destruction, so. <laughs> yeah, well. Ah, go figure. Terrible, terrible conditions here. Mm. How about a, you got a favorite horror host? Have you seen them? Uh, how about Miss Vampira? I bet she's your favorite. Do you know that the first time, yeah, uh, yeah, go, go ahead, the host, first host. time mm. that Vampira or uh, Orson Welles saw Vampira scantily clad oh. in the boudoir? This is out of Vampira's own words that uh, Orson said, "Nice carcass." Don't don't remind me. It's you know, it was uh, a poor poor. Uh, and Vampire surely never got uh, into an Orson Welles film, did she? No, she did not. Um, you know, we never made it that far. But um, I did. Uh, I did like seeing her though. Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, she ended up uh, being cast as Vampire and uh, your protege Ed Wood uh, in his films. Uh, What'd you think of Mr. Uh, Ed Wood Jr.? Oh gosh. Um, Ed was the kind of director that I have been talking to you about. The kind that had a lot of films and a lot of a lot of stuff made that should not have been. You know, he had no clue what he was doing. And like <laughs> I said, directing was the easiest job. I mean, it is the easiest job there is in the film business. But you know, I mean, he he couldn't handle that. And then I mean, he he was what dressing in women's clothes. Uh, apparently he uh, was a transvestite. I think we could say that on Crimson Theater. That's not a homosexual. That's a, a man that just wants to be really close to women. Oh, uh -huh. okay. Well, I'm uh, not uh, not not that familiar with that in my time. So I, you know. Well, you know, I, I don't know what to say. It's it's I, hard to understand. I know. Uh, I don't see that that women's panties leave a lot of room for expansion. Mm. Yes. Uh, how, wait a minute, how would you know? <laughs> I, I was a, <laughs> I was just, uh, you know, speculating. Oh, hypothetically, you know, yeah. right? Hypothetically. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Unlike yourself. Uh, oh. Those days are over. Why'd you have to bring it up? Who brought it up? Oh, okay. Anyway, ghoulies, get back to Gamma vs. Zyger Please. on Dr. Destruction's Crimson Theater uh, editing room, I'm sure. The one and only Gamma vs. Virus. I didn't like, you know, I got didn't like that when he took a big, uh, he got he got stabbed right in the heart, poor Gamera. Uh, that was bad. rough. I didn't think he was going to come back, but he sure did. He did. Yeah. He, did. he, he got that nasty virus. A very uh, octopodian uh, sort of creature. Uh, yeah, with sort of a sharp knife head. Gamera's m movies, they're, the monsters are always rather abstract, rather cubist by design. And uh, it's just, just strange. And certainly... Gamera takes always takes a rougher beating in his movies than Godzilla did. Yes. It's, it, it, towards the end, you know, they messed up Godzilla pretty bad, but not when they. Made